If you'd like help in growing your own YouTube channel faster, apply for coaching with me using the link in the description below. I had this thought the other day, like, I should be a Nike yoga teacher. Anything that I get into, that's kind of where my mind goes. Like, what's the ultimate form of this? Like, what's the highest? If I'm starting an agency, like, how can I get on Madison Avenue? Like, how can I get to that level? Like, that's where my mind goes. That's, and it, that's sick. That's, I feel exactly the same way about so many things I start doing. What does it take to get to the next level? If you're on this side of YouTube, you're probably like me. You make things happen by hustling, by grinding it out, through your devotion to consistency. This is a foundation of success that I too will never drop, but there is something more. There's been times I've been hit by flashes of inspiration, eureka moments, and those are the instances that have given me quantum leaps in my career. On today's episode of the podcast, I sat down with Will, a creative entrepreneur working with deadly efficacy, but by tapping into stillness. An ex-college athlete, Will had taken on lots of aches and pains and found himself turning to yoga. Little did he know that the clarity and insight he would gain from that discipline would propel his own media agency and Web3 efforts to the next level. Welcome to episode 14. Roll that intro. What it do, what it does, where you been, where you was, what it ain't, what it is. Face in the mud, y'all really be hating in the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know goon put too much bass in a sub, cup full of blood and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, then play this real loud where you live. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by the Captain Sinbad YouTuber Group Coaching Academy. After having worked with almost 30, 35 one-on-one -on -one clients to help them grow their YouTube channels, I've turned what I would often say to my one-on-one -on -one clients into a 12-module course alongside a group coaching academy. In the academy, you will learn what it took me four years to learn to get to 500,000 subscribers and the strategies I'm actually going to continually implement to get to 1 million and beyond. YouTube is a game of attrition. You have to learn how the game works and then play it long enough to get results. And for anyone who does both of those things, learns the rules and then works long enough to make videos in the right fashion, they will start noticing that their videos start to trend upwards, the views go up, the subscribers grow up. Some of my past clients have made enormous strides in their storytelling. And I know, I can guarantee that in the long haul, the watch time on their videos is going to keep improving. So while some of these creators that haven't blown up yet, you can check out their channels. Clients like Anuj from the channel Concept New Era, who made a video on living like Alex Hormozzi for seven days. That video, you can just watch it and see how much more story driven it is. And you can probably anticipate if a guy made videos like this more often, he will probably trickle up to at least 100,000 views on one of his video. Another one of my clients, Eric, is someone I'm also very, very proud of. His latest video blew me away. The storytelling in that one, was absolutely incredible. These clients of mine and the clients I'll be taking on for the Group Coaching Academy, they're the people who really want it. They're the people who really want to succeed on this platform and they're willing to put in the hard work to learn how the game works. And I know these guys are gonna stay in the game long enough to really make it big. If you wanna check out their videos, both of them are in the description box. If making your own channel grow is something that you're passionate about, you wanna turn your own YouTube channel into a five figure per month business, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take effort, but I could take off years of effort in that direction. I could make the journey so much better because you'll get my experience over four years, the pain, the 3 a.m. edits, you'll get all that put into a focused effort and you'll know how the game works. If you wanna learn more, there's an application form in the description box, you can check that out. With that being said, let's get on with the episode. Dude, um, thanks for thanks for dropping by, coming over. I kind of like hit you up last minute. I was like, I need you. I, I, you know what I did? I just followed a hunch. I followed an instinct. And I was like, uh, I don't, you're the first podcast guest. First of all, we've only just started adding on guests. So you might be wondering like, where did this come about? But you're the first guy who I don't really know that much about, but I had an instinct. You're just up to cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely feel that about you because you're, 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 you're- I appreciate that. How do you know what to pursue and how do you keep yourself organized? And like, I mean, if you have three big ventures, basically. I would say for me, like my focus the last four or five months has been like implementing systems where um, I can automate you know, anything that I'm not, uh, I don't directly need to be involved with. So I don't touch, like my agency does a lot of marketing. I mean, they do, we do marketing for a lot of the, the nightclubs that are owned by the same um, group that owns the armory and some of their other businesses. Uh, we do a bunch of stuff that I don't touch at all anymore. And so it's really been building myself out of the day-to-day -day of my businesses so I can actually focus on bigger picture things. You're also an avid yoga enthusiast, right? 
How did you get into yes. that? Yes. How's that? When when did you get in that? How has that informed the projects you pursue, the instincts that you have? Um, I mean, even this insight of like, I get this advice all the time. Like my, I have a business coach and he tells me like, I need to be focused on bigger picture stuff. I need to be focused on product launches specifically. Mm-hmm. I have this audience. Now to an artist, that's just like a gift to like, I, I see myself as an artist and honestly a fucking idiot all across the board in any other in any other way I like I just want to make stories that I, I when I'm operating at my best I just want to make stories that I share with people and I want I, like my the, the three words that I like would pair my channel towards is like invigorate exhilarate courage if I if each video can land someone with that that's really where my brain is but in order to do that I have to like stay in the business mm-hmm. and you just made this comment about how like you're focused more on big picture. You're trying to like be low touch, get yourself out of the business. And so you have people, you you create systems to hire people to work inside the business. What, in what, <laughs> two-parter, how has yoga informed the business moves you make? And secondly, do you think as a creative, you can ever get yourself out of the business really? That's a really good question. Um, well, I'll, I'll unpack that a little bit. So to start st- stepping back for a second. So yoga is something that I found when I, so two years into college, um, I had to, I quit playing basketball cause I fucked up my knee so bad. It was literally like I had no cartilage in my left knee. Holy it's, shit. it's mostly like you can hear it click sometimes but yeah yeah but it's like i'm functional i can do everything now but at the time it was pretty bad that's a whole nother story yeah i could i could walk stairs were hard (laughs) dang stairs were hard um i used ozone therapy to heal that which is another ozone therapy yeah so that's it's a rabbit it's a rabbit hole um <laughs> let's say on let's say on yeah the yoga let's come, train. Let's come back to we'll that come back to ozone. it is an interesting story but so with yoga i just i wanted something where like i knew i needed to work on my flexibility um and my joints and, and everything after just being so focused and so hard driving with basketball for so many years um and so i was like well you know yoga is good for flexibility right and so i i tried it and um, you know, it was off and on. It wasn't like something I was super passionate about, but kind of, I felt good after I did it and I felt my body felt better and I was able to perform better when I was working out and, uh, rehabbing and everything. And so, um, just was something that kind of, for some reason or another, I kept coming back to. And then I, I had also started to get into meditation back in, I think it was my junior year of college. And so I realized the connection between yoga and meditation at a certain point. Um, and, and once I started really getting serious about working on my mental health and just kind of like optimizing myself and my life, um, I realized that yoga was a really cool tool to get myself into my body. And cause I'm always, I'm someone who's always like really been in my head a lot, uh, very logical, very uh, always thinking like it, it was hard for me to shut down my brain at times. And so when I was in a yoga class, especially like a hot yoga flow or I'm like really in it, um, I was totally out of my head and it felt amazing. And I noticed that I was calmer. I noticed that I just, I was able to think clear and just perform better in, in almost every area of my life. And so, um, that being said, you know, I, um, kind of fell in and out of it for a few years, but then, uh, when I got into the path of entrepreneurship, I was like, okay, I need to level up every area of my life. I need to, you know, work on my mind, work on my body. And I was just on this whole like self-improvement personal growth kick. And so I was like, well, I'm going to go deep with yoga. Um, you know, if I'm going to do anything, I'd like to, I like to go deep with it. I can't just do something surface level. So if I'm really gonna like practice yoga long term, I was like, well, I need to learn, I need to do a teacher training um, and like really learn about what this is and what I'm getting myself into. Cause I like, you know, then you have all the intellectual benefit of having the knowledge of the history of it and the philosophy and some of the spirituality and also like understanding your body better and um, systems of energy and chakras and all that stuff. So. 
Uh, I was like, I want to learn all of it. So I want to do a yoga teacher training. I didn't want to teach. I just wanted to learn. Um, but then, and I did that in 2021, but then when I finished the training, I realized like I, I worked through a lot of deep psychological and physical and spiritual issues that probably had been with me my whole life. And I felt, I felt really good. Um, but I realized that it was something that I felt called to give back. Like I did the teacher training program for myself, mm. ironically, but, um, but I was like, I need to, I feel like I need to share this, right? I feel like I need to start exercising my voice a bit more. Um, and this was kind of late 2021. And, and I also felt like I needed to start being more vocal on social media and as a, as a content creator too, which is something I, I had like experimented with a little bit as an entrepreneur, but um, never really, and just like creatively, you know, for fun, but it was never something I really took seriously. And, uh, you know, still a journey I'm on um, myself. But so when I started teaching, I just started being more vocal in, in kind of every area of my life and started even like speaking more, getting more speaking gigs and um, starting to figure out, you know, what it is that I actually wanted to say in the world and bring into the world as opposed to, you know, just making money and, and trying to, um, you know, help other people like my clients and, and brands um, get their message out. I, I was really more introspective as far as like, um, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to bring into the world? Cause I, I went through this whole process and now I have all this knowledge and it, it feels wrong to just like keep that inside. Um, but yoga, yeah, I mean, originally it was a tool to heal my body. Then it became a tool to heal my mind. And then I stayed with it cause it became something that was important to my spirit. I started meditating like seriously in college. My dad this was one of the best gifts he gave me is like as a kid, as like an eight year old, he forced me to go. There's like a Minneapolis Institute of Meditation or something. He like forced mm -hmm. me to go there when I was eight and sit down with this like um, Hindu sage, great Indian sage. And it was so, I thought I'd be so bored, but he would, he would, it was like spinal breathing meditation is what they say it is. And this guy had such a gruff vo voice. He, had, he was known as the laughing monk. And he would just say like, go down to the muladhara, go up to the crown. And like, I actually, actually, I'm surprised by myself. I actually killed that. Like, that was exactly what he sounded like. And he was like, it's basically saying like, come up to the crown. Yeah. Like go down to the energy. Yeah, yeah. Up yeah. through your seven chakras. Yep. And even as an eight year old, I spent like 20 minutes being bored. I was like, what? so we're just breathing like with my eyes closed. And then I think around minute 25 or 30, you start to find yourself getting lost in it a little bit. And we ended up going for like, I want to say like 80 minutes. It was long as fuck. Damn, right at eight? <laughs> at age eight. I was oh, like not ready intense. for that. Like an eight-year-old, I just wanted to play Pokemon. Like I just want to get back to my life. But I, I left it for a few years. And then in college, I went back. I was so stressed pursuing this like pre-med degree, <sighs> chemistry major in college. And I was legit probably like depressed in certain phases of college. Uh, and like super anxious because I was like just not a high performer. Like getting B's in college means you can't get into medical school. Mm. And I was a B student and I started meditating out of like desperation. And it was actually an Elliot Hulse video. If you've ever seen him, I haven't. Well, he was dope <laughs> back in the day. It was like one of the first self-improvement YouTubers, like a, like a manly self-improvement YouTuber. And he had this video where he said, like, if you want to be confident, do one thing every day. That's it. Do one thing. Now, I don't know what that thing is, but do that one thing and you'll start to believe in yourself because you kept a promise to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that made me realize like, I'm going to, the one thing I'm going to do is meditate. And, uh, I don't know if you ever had like, I don't know how you discovered my channel or did you even discover my channel or was it through Mark? It was through Mark. Okay. Yeah, it was through Mark. One of the things that we always go here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that yoga is actually linked to is the abstaining of abstaining of the busting of nuts. You, you mm, keep that, you no keep fab. no fab, you yeah. keep that dialed back. And, uh, I like knew about that back in college, but it, I didn't have any strategy for implementing it. And so I would meditate and I found that discipline was easier to practice. And I got to say like the combination of those two things back in the day is like, uh, maybe what got me through college. It, it just gave me a little bit more, um, energy, I think to like get through work in the day 
it's fo- it's focus, right? Like if you, I think that's really the biggest thing um, that people don't get about like all of these practice, you know, like no fap or doing have yoga. You, do you have medicine. any uh, no fap? Uh, do, do you have any belief in it, or do you think it's stupid? No, I, I think it could be. I mean, I've definitely, I've definitely done it for times, periods of time. Um, yeah, ne- never any like crazy period, but I think anything that brings concentration and discipline into your life can be positive. And it's obviously like that sexual energy is um, a really big part of our consciousness. Like it's whether we like to admit it or not. And so when you're exercising control there, I mean, there's definitely energetic implications. Yeah, I think for me, I, in order to survive college, I had to like reharness everything I had into the direct of like surviving the experience. It was very tough for me. Uh, but I can imagine in an entrepreneurial venture, it's also it's also a superpower like meditation, yoga. For me, I still yeah. try to keep up the other discipline as well. Just like I f- actually, it's weird. I find like YouTube views go up when I'm <laughs> on it, and like brand deals are better <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah this, this, this is my own superstition but it's like a, it's your superpower it's my feedback loop that i've like come to believe in what inspires you in life human potential i mean really just for me personally um i have to keep evolving like i i have to keep figuring out what the next version of of will is and talking to, I know, you know, Mark and, um, that's really why Mark and I connected (laughs) in some ways and he has a similar mentality, but, um, it's really not just human potential, but like showing myself and then showing other people what's possible. So like for me, before I started my agency, like I was, not a great speaker. Like I'd never done sales. I was super shy, super anxious. Um, I got into the entertainment space. I'd never set foot in a nightclub. And then two years later, I had an agency that was running marketing for the top venues and nightclubs in the city in Minneapolis. Um, so just like doing, and that's not like what I'm, that isn't what I'm specifically passionate about. It's cool. You know, music is cool. Entertainment is cool. But the fact that I was able to accomplish that, like build myself into the person who could, um, you know, build an agency or communicate to like learn, learn an industry and then be able to communicate to people in that industry and build brands in it or or do campaigns in it. You know, that was interesting to me and why I got into media. Um, because I, I just wanted to like, it, it was something that seemed cool to me. And I was like, I want to figure out how far I can go in this space. And so that's what I, with yoga, it's like, it's something that I enjoy. It's something that I find meaningful. And I think if everyone in the world did more yoga and meditation, everyone would probably be better off. So I know it's beneficial. And so I'm like, I want to see how far I can go with it. You know, maybe I have this dream in my head of, I know a couple people um, that I'm indirectly connected to that are Nike yoga teachers. Like if I'm going to be a yoga teacher, you know, I had this thought the other day, like I should be a Nike yoga teacher. Right. And I don't even like, I just finished a training. I'm not even, I don't have like a huge community behind me. And that's not where I necessarily see myself making all my money long term is from teaching yoga. But if I, anything that I get into, that's kind of where my mind goes. Like, what's the ultimate form of this? Like what, what's the highest, if I'm starting an agency, like how, you know, how can I get on Madison Avenue? Like, how can I get to that level? Like, that's where my mind goes. That's, and it, that's sick. That's, I feel exactly the same way about so many things I start doing. Yeah. Anyway, you were saying, I, <laughs> <it off. laughs> yeah. um, I think my problem, both strength and problem in the first three years of it's been about three years, a little over three years for me being an entrepreneur full time. Um, one of the good things and things that's held me back is is what we were talking about previously, which is focus. Um, I think I came in with the mentality of like, I need to try everything because I don't know what I want to do and I don't really know who I am yet. But now in the next phase of my life, I think it's gonna be a little bit more channeled 
where like I want to sit down and get one brand to a level where it's like nationally or globally recognized. I want to actually like build a company that's a bigger than what I've built before. And I think to do that, um, I need to hone in and, and focus on one thing. Not that I, you know, I think I can own multiple businesses, but I can't have my creative energy going all over the place. If that makes sense. Yeah. You notice that with the first thing that came to mind is the YouTube algorithm to succeed on YouTube. Some people will just like shoot out videos, even Gary V he focuses on volume mm -hmm. and then he's like upload on TikTok and LinkedIn and do all this other stuff. Really? When you love a piece of content and when it goes, and content doesn't even do it justice, a piece of art, video art, and it does well. It's the kind of video you want to send to your friends. The person who made that was out on a run. They were thinking about that video mm -hmm. and they were listening to a song and that song, they're like, oh, this song would work. I have thought about a, a, beat drop in a song and a man with a gun coming around the end, like going into like, that's what my image went like this, like Navy seal going into fire to, to a certain beat drop. And you think about these moments and then you put all of that into one video, one focal point, one singular effort. And it's the kind of stuff where people watch it and they get a moment where like, they have to comment about it. They have to share it with their pal because it, you put everything into that one thing and kind of going back to our early point, yeah, you could, you could own a bunch of different businesses and you know, you could take on a bunch of different endeavors, skills you want to build and all that stuff. But it is useful to have a North star. It is useful to have like that one focal point that leave everything aside. Let's put away all the noise now. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite uh, lines from all of Shakespeare is just Richard the third. He's like this grotesque. I don't know if you know this play. I feel like I, I'm, I just I probably have read parts of it. I'm at a some theater point, nerd, you know. This is what I grew up on. But he's like this. He's a guy with a major chip on his shoulder because yeah. he was like a hunchback. King Richard is like the grovelly king, and uh, he started it off. It was like now is the hour of our discontent, you know. And he's like, he's like beginning now. Like this is it. This is the one thing. And I every time I honestly every time I need my videos to start performing well again. <laughs> If we had a month where things were dipping too hard, yeah, I'm like, fuck all the sponsors, fuck everything. What is the one video that matters? Um, and the same is true for business too. It's like, hundred percent. Especially you, you're juggling like a couple different elements. I know you've got two main business endeavors right now, but you also have a bunch of interests that you pursue. And I sometimes do. like yoga is competing with crypto. <laughs> you know, like you put more into where you put energy. There into. is, there is a, someone invited me to be a part of the yoga Dow recently. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so there's an intersection there. There's but intersections I, that's everywhere. not my project. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's cool. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's very true. And you're someone obviously who tries a ton of things and obviously picks up a lot of different skill sets and has a lot of curiosity. So I, uh, I'm sure you get it to some extent, but it's, um, it's like, how do you keep, like, you want to focus on one thing, but then how do you keep growing? How do you keep exercising that creative side of yourself? And I think that's part of the problem too, with people who are highly creative. And that's something that I didn't really understand until a few years into being an entrepreneur was like, why am I, why the fuck am I doing all this? Like I had, um, I had a really good job. I could have just, if I was being strategic and just trying to like make the most money, like I didn't, make the right decisions. Um, I wasted a lot of money. I tried a lot of things that didn't go anywhere. Um, but a lot of it was like for my own learning or my own developments, um, or my own curiosity. And to like, when you're really, when you are creative or you consider yourself an artist, I mean, I, I would say that, um, like strategy and, and building brands is, is my art. And like, when I, when I get in a room with, with someone with a, whether it's a client or, um, you know, myself to some extent now that I'm actually focusing on my own brand, but, um, I can, I can get in a room and like, really, if I spend 30 minutes with someone and talk about them or talk about their company, I can see like all these potentials for where their brand could go. And I can sit down and like map out, okay, like, here's where, here's what you have, here's where you could go. And like, how, here's how we get there. Um, and so it's, it's funny cause I do it for other people, but it's, been a blind spot for myself because I, <laughs> I have all these, all these opportunities, all these potentials, but sitting down and mapping out, like, um, how do I, how do you choose one and how do I get there has been the struggle for me. 
Um, but I think, I think it's really like personal narrative is something that's come up for me recently. Um, it's like literally sitting down and scripting out how you want it to go. Cause like at a certain point you realize, wait, wait, so it's kind of like a visualization or written visualization yeah. exercise that you go through well, before big, like performance based events. Yeah. Or just in more so like for inst- not just setting goals, like I'll set goals, but also like write out the narrative or design the narrative around like, how do I want this to go? Like, how do I want, what do I want my life to look like? Mm. Right. Cause I know I could be successful here if I really follow this path. I know I could be, I could be a Nike yoga teacher. I could run a, I could build my agency and make that really big, or I could go super hard into web three. Um, but what do I, you know, where do all those paths lead me and what do I actually want? Cause I think people get so like in their thing, they get so identified with like, I'm a YouTuber or I'm an entrepreneur or I'm a fitness bro or whatever, um, that they just keep going and going and going. Um, and then trying to like swerve their path around to, to like, well, I want a relationship. So I'm going to swerve over here. I want, you know, uh, I want to get involved in this. So, they just kind of like swerve their path around instead of just like sitting down and designing like what is exactly the life that I want. Um, Mm. And like, if I'm gonna build this brand, like what is is the story that I'm telling, right? And not what is the story that people are gonna tell in three years? Like I'm gonna sit down and write that right now and then we'll see what it looks like in three years, but. I find like, I used to really believe what you just said. Like I I would follow that model of like visualizing where I wanted my life to go specifically. And even like how I want things like in this season of my life, I want to be on Broadway doing a, doing a play and like have a girlfriend who I'm like, I kiss goodbye as I go off for the evening performance and I have like a beer before the thing, just cause I'm a cool actor guy. And, um, I, I find now that maybe I've been heartbroken too many times by the process of efforting towards certain visions, even though my life is often dope. I, that's not what I would say. My life is often dope. Yeah. But <laughs> these <laughs> days, but uh, yeah, maybe there's just some like, but there's been some letting go and uh, it is, it is kind of like this constant battle between forging a path and, honoring like an intention or a will you set for what you want to pursue which is it the nike yoga instructor path or is it like having one of the biggest agencies and ending up on madison avenue or what might it be but then there's also a element of just like this is the season of my life i'm in Mm -hmm. this is the general intention that i'm going to work towards every day is going to have momentum and i have no idea where it's going to go long term that's what I've sort of arrived at. There's like a general. That's more the yoga mentality. That's the yoga mentality, man. I guess that's what like I'm, non-attachment and just being in the flow. I'm trying to do that more. Like, I, I question it all the time. Just before you came over, Thomas and I were talking about like, why am I why am I going to flight school? You know, I have no like. Why are actually, you going to flight school? I actually don't know. Like, I I mean, I could come up with answers that sound okay. Like. I watched The Aviator as a kid and I always liked the idea of planes and I had a vision as a younger guy of owning an air- electric airline. So it's like the Tesla of the sky. See, that that would be like the personal narrative. That would be like, I guess you, you did the thing and then you develop like in your head the story around why you're doing it. But yeah. like the reason that you did it was maybe something deeper or maybe it was just like, fuck it, I'm going to do this. But. Dude, that's an actor exercise, basically. Like, it's so easy to come up with the narrative that sounds okay, but you dig deeper. This is, this is a very true actor exercise. I'll be like, wh- why do you want this? Why? Why? You go deeper and deeper. And then you ultimately arrive at like, I want to prove that I wasn't a mistake. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's the crux of like where this line of conversation is going to, because um, to some extent, like we're all we're all actors. Like we're all developing roles for ourselves all the time. And that's really, um, once you, you realize like one of the hardest things to realize is that you can be anything, but you can't be everything. Yeah. And so there is, there is a level, there's like the yang, the masculine, like let's develop that narrative, develop, I'm going to build myself, channel my energy, build my brand or, you know, whatever it is that 
you feel like you're supposed to do in the world or what excites you or whatever it is. But then there's also like that yang, the feminine or the the other side of it where it it is like, okay, well, I'm doing some cool stuff. I'm I'm gonna be at peace with that. And I wanna I wanna try yoga. I wanna try flight school. Um, you know, let's flow and let's see where that goes. And and not being so like attached to the outcome of everything. So, but I think you still do need, what is important is having like that North star of, of orienting yourself towards something. Cause if you don't have that, then you're, then you're aimless to some extent. Like you have, what you're doing is synthesizing a lot of stuff across disciplines and lots of different things that you try, but it all channels towards your YouTube channel. Channels that is true. Your, no, it, it all is, goes towards your channel. Everything, everything is, um, that's the benefits of this job as well. Anything that I learned that could be seen as trivial in any other industry or profession for YouTube, it does become an interesting thing to witness. So one could just say like, why are you learning? Why are you going to fly school? Well, actually it is just interesting content for at least for a couple of videos. Yeah. Maybe they'll get bored of it at some point, but like it is interesting. And I will say like, I've learned some great lessons from it. I want to say I've made money off of it. Thomas might not always agree, but like, <laughs> I, I feel like flight school has taught me some things that I've applied to my YouTube channel or even called out on my YouTube channel that has indirectly made things better. A lot of things have, you know, um, there is a energetic cross discipline between things. I often feel this with stories in cinema and I don't know how much you love movies. I get the instinct that you love movies I do. too. I do love movies. I remember some years ago, the trailer for Dunkirk came out. Okay, so Dunkirk yeah. was like a yep, middling, I'm, decent movie, but it wasn't like one of Christopher Nolan's best movies, I wouldn't say. I'd agree. But the trailer for that was the ticking clock sound. I remember. And it, it wasn't even structured like a classic trailer. Like Hollywood trailers often tend to follow into the trope of like light inside, like light exposition, inciting incident. Boom! This inciting incident has led to a concoction of events and then montage before cut to black. Mm -hmm. That's the Hollywood trailer formula. Dunkirk was like same kind of inside, not really an inciting incident, but just this that trailer is this consistent, uneasy speed up of momentum and tension just like throughout you don't even know why you're so tense because the sound is going and it's like warships the enemy has just completely surrounded there's just like this build up in this trailer that just went all the way in and he then kinda, even kind of did that in the movie too yeah that even the movie followed that trope where just like it started off kind of slow and then it just kept going fast and before it's over you're like so cathartic and um i noticed this even in small moments like uh, one of the fight I'm going way too deep one of the fighter pl pilots he's like he's on me and then Tom Hardy's voice he almost sounds like Bane in this he goes I'm on him and even the way he said that for me I was like w everything is so cool like the tension is so awesome and uh, this sounds weird to say but I was a teacher when that trailer came out yeah I like crushed that week like I was just so on top of my stuff and I, there was a, even a, a sense of like stateliness to my personality i get character hangover very easily so like <laughs> <laughs> there was like a stateliness to everything i did that translate it was like art it was a freaking hollywood trailer translating into my life as a chemistry teacher came into school with like this military personality like, I, maybe a little bit like this old timey military personality yeah. <laughs> yeah um and i i am someone who very much feels like i get inspiration from different vantage points and so maybe it all is the yin and the yang it also ultimately is what the, sometimes the flow gives you the inspiration to tap into your masculine more more 100 percent, and vice versa yeah 100 percent. like or meditation or like whatever you do to clear your mind and allow yourself to connect to something that inspires you or source or whatever you want to call it yeah um i mean i think that's the process of finding yourself or finding mastery too. And, and I, I think it's a good, it's not always the easiest way to do it. Like what the path that you've taken or the path that I've taken from the outside of, you know, maybe we've bounced around a bit. We've tried different industries, tried different careers, um, tried a lot of, you know, learned a lot of different rant, like yoga and flight school, you know, not everyone is, is doing that. Um, but through it all, you know, we find, 
ways to channel all of the insights that we learn in all of these different experiences into something meaningful. And that one thing, whether, you know, for you, you know, maybe that's YouTube or creating, being a creator, like you're able to chant, you're able to channel all of these insights that you've synthesized across all of these disciplines into being a, an incredible creator. And I think that's, I mean, even if you look at people, like I was listening to a podcast the other day, um, it was Aubrey Marcus and the, the guest on the show was talking about how like all of the great, he was a mathematician and he was talking about how all of these great mathematicians um, in the past and philosophers and, and just people that we like Pythagoras, the dude who made the Pythagorean theory and Pyth- Pythagoras. Yeah, Pythagoras, Pythagoras, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like he was, I, th- I think it was him. I correct it. Well, we can fact check it later, but it was, it was <laughs> yeah. one of the greats um, who was like really into music and like very talented musically. Uh, and, but no one talks about that. That makes sense. That's and so, so awesome. And it's like this dude um, that was on Aubrey Marcus's podcast is like one of the foremost mathematicians in the world. And, um, is actually like discovering new math and like creating theories and whatever you, whatever the mathematicians call them. I should know I have a math minor, but, um, and he says that when he wants to create new math, he'll go like, he'll go practice music or he'll go like meditate or, and that's where, and then he'll be able to like synthesize, um, new ideas because of that. And I think we in, the 19th and 20th century maybe just got so lost in this industrialization where we're like, we have to for, we have to forge humans into like one tool for Mm -hmm. one specific job that we lost. Like we lost the understanding that, you know, our for creative work, especially like our best work comes out of people who have like experienced many different things and found themselves through those experiences and then are able to apply it apply that wisdom to whatever their craft or their art is. One of the images that come to mind is in the Sherlock Holmes movies with Guy Ritchie. Yeah. Whenever he's trying to solve something, he's plucking at his violin, you know, and he's like, it's it's like this cross, there's parallels running across all things. Mm -hmm. Everything's connected. And, uh, you know, in red pill YouTube, like this, like alpha male YouTube, niche which I'm, I'm, I'm probably tangential to like my channel some would consider tangential to that but maybe not head on that um there's this whole there's this whole thing i guess i find it kind of cringe even though i've participated in it the rise of weak men men are becoming weak testosterone levels are dipping and like every guy is now becoming a beta there's this whole thing like people say that more but actually it's um you have to have access to both sides of you and you you're definitely losing out on some level of potency i I asked you like what what inspires you the most what you're what you're driven by is human potential you're not going to be able to tap into human potential if you don't have access to both elements as a guy when i'm out running and i'm on like mile 12 and i'm like thinking hateful thoughts to run the last two it's like okay sure it's pure i'm tapping into my masculine then but when i'm meditating and i'm getting new insights or even um I'm watching a movie scene. Am I starting to tear up or something? (laughs) That actually is just as powerful, you know, is just as powerful. Like nothing, not everything has to be grinded out. And then, uh, and then of course, sometimes that is useful to tap into as well. You you know, a hundred percent is useful. Yeah. Both yoga and strength training of, of all efforts, you know, is, is powerful. Um, and maybe that's been the key to your success is like, you've got a little bit of both, you know, You've, you've got a very sensitive energy. Like I, I can say this because compared to like Austin, who was with us this morning, like, yeah. your energy is much more calm and sensitive. And like, even the way you just, your face looks, this is me like overly analyzing and shit. So I'm sorry about that. But like <laughs> everything about your delivery is My like- My face looks soft. It's it just, there's, there's like a, an intrigue. Like I would put you in like- no, a, I, I get what you're saying. An, I would put you in like a 1930s war film, but you're like riding home to your lover. You know, nice. <laughs> that's the scene you get. <laughs> nice, I can see that. I put you in like 1917. Like you would fit into that world. Like perfectly. I'm writing the, the letter you're writing and then into I'm, the, under, I'm with the candle, fighting the battle like, that mother, I, might I might not come home, but, but yeah, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever that scene it is i can see that um that's your that's your vibe but like you obviously box and you have you have access to both elements and i think as men especially on like the youtube stratosphere that i find myself in there's not enough respect given to being in flow 
yeah i would say that a lot of there's a lot of weak men masquerading as like alpha males who are afraid to tap into their emotions sometimes the most masculine thing you can do for yourself is just to be <laughs> expressive and honest and vulnerable and uh well, there's, there's a, I mean, being the strongest is one thing. There's a, there's a conversation around like, you know, who's, who can lift the most or who can yep. build the biggest business or who can, and that's, that's a competition, right? And, and I'm driven by that too. Like, um, and it's, it's valuable. It's important um, to, and I, you know, seeing how far you can go definitely inspires me. Um, pushing myself, whether it's boxing or, something more like even some of the yoga classes i've taken have been incredibly physically difficult yeah um that art is is less masculine in in general but definitely there can be that in it um but that doesn't you know like being jeff bezos and you might have the most money like you might i'm not i don't know jeff bezos i mean he's seems like a pretty he's figured some things out so um just a random example but like just because you you've found success in one area like you're you're the best at this or you're the best at that um doesn't mean like you've got it all figured out it doesn't mean that um like you might have the most money but your relationships might suck um or you might you know you might be the strongest power lifter um but you you go home and you're like you keep lifting because you're actually like depressed and you don't know how to deal with your emotions and like you're actually not happy and you just keep covering it up with more you know more and more yang um but you you never actually like sit down and, and deal with that right um and that's, it's not a critique on any like men in particular but i think the issue with men is that we sometimes don't feel like we can explore all those parts of ourselves and we might feel like it's weak to explore all those like our deal with our emotions and um explore the different sides of ourselves um but i think as a as someone who as, at least aspires to be a leader who thinks that um personally our generation needs more people to be leaders and role models um and kind of stand and, and take responsibility for themselves and what they're doing in the world um you know in, in some meaningful sense i think there's a deep strength that comes from having faced your shadow having faced all these different sides of yourselves in the masculine sense and the feminine sense and then you know um coming out of that as a more complete more integrated and, and more whole person and that's that's what i think like a real strong sense of masculinity could look like um definitely you know, the alpha male stuff is not bad. It's, it's, you know, again, like I'm a boxer too, but, um, it's only one part of it. Well, dude, uh, I kind of came into this conversation telling you like, we're just going to talk, but I don't know what it's all going to amount to. I feel like for me, the big takeaway is use both, use both sides of yourself and use multiple disciplines. And who cares if there's mistakes along the way? Like, Ultimately, I feel like you will go farther. Like you will in life go for much, much farther having left the corporate job, becoming an entrepreneur, learning yoga, spending 500 hours in instructor classes for yoga. Uh, damn, dude, I'm going to fly the damn plane. I'm going to get this pilot's license. Who cares if it puts the YouTube views up and down? M multiple facets of life, multiple experiences multiple energies that you tap into the masculine and the feminine the yoga and the meditation and the boxing i feel like that's ultimately what uh it's what makes us worth watching i hope anyway but i appreciate you have coming on sharing your insights your we should hang out you know we should we should definitely take that yoga class yeah at the let's, least. let's do it <laughs> maybe maybe if this is a a theme you theme the video around like the integration of both maybe we do boxing and yoga dude let's get it let's i need one uh, after the other really what this podcast is turning into is just it's just an end for me to have more guy friends <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm always i i'm always down to hang out i need i need help on my content creation at some point too so dude i'll you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help you you help me with my yoga i'll help you with your with your YouTube. i got you i definitely got you on the yoga <laughs> okay well, this has been this episode of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. 
Will's Instagram and everything he's been working on will be linked down below. Uh, super cool guy. Definitely you should check out his work. Um, maybe you'll get some insights on content strategy and building up your own career as an entrepreneur. But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. You can find the podcast everywhere podcasts are found, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But man, I'm going to fist pump you. Appreciate you. Thanks for you. coming on. Yeah, Greatness of course. It was coming. fun. We'll catch you guys next time.